A flurry of diplomatic activity is trying to establish a truce in the city of Aleppo and stop the war in Syria. But it's a long shot amid growing divisions between allies of President Bashar al-Assad and opposition supporters. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov hope to reach a deal soon, but major differences remain over the terms of the deal. For example, Russia insists the rebels leave eastern Aleppo. And the clock is ticking. John Kerry will leave office next month when Donald Trump is sworn in as president. Atrocities are being committed every day as Aleppo is falling into the hands of the regime. Along with its allies, Qatar is now leading a diplomatic offensive to try to rally international support for an end to the bloodshed in Aleppo. Last weekend, it participated in a Friends of Syria group meeting in Paris. Qatar's Foreign Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani has accused the Syrian regime of committing crimes against humanity, adding that even if it takes over Aleppo, the rebels will continue to fight. So what exactly would those who support the opposition do if Aleppo falls to Syrian forces? Will they be able to convince the U.S. to lift its ban on sending advanced weapons to the rebels? And what could diplomacy achieve when the Syrian army, backed by Russia, is so close to a decisive military victory? Just some of the questions for the Qatari foreign minister as he talks to Al Jazeera. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman bin Jassim Qatar, Al Thani Qatar's Foreign Minister, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. L let's start with the situation in Aleppo, which has been described by the United Nations, aid agencies, activists on the ground as beyond catastrophic. Yet, nothing has been done by the international community to put an end to the bloodshed in uh, Aleppo. The problem here, uh, when we discussed the situation there and the escalation in Aleppo, we found that we have no alternative because we are not with the military solution. We are always insisting on the political solution, but it seems that the regime is betting on the military solution. That's why he's continuing what he's doing there. Uh, the humanitarian situation there is catastrophic. Uh, there, there is no hospitals uh, uh, operating now. Uh, people are wounded and, and, and there are dead bodies, cannot be evacuated because of, of its uh, uh, besieged. We are trying our best uh, to ensure some humanitarian corridors to uh, uh, ensure humanitarian uh, access for the civilians there in, in Aleppo. We need to do something to protect civilians there. And the problem, the international community response to that uh, appeared that it's failed by all means. Now in the Security Council, the sixth, the sixth time uh, veto uh, being casted uh, just last week in the Security Council which shows that the Security Council failed to, to fulfill uh, the protection for, for the Syrian civilians there. So that's why also we are carrying out another efforts in the General Assembly. Uh, we have uh, this uh, resolution which was adopted by, by uh, Canada and it, it's been voted around 122 votes in favor of, of uh, this resolution which can be helpful for us to set the stage for the next level in the General Assembly uh, under uh, uh, the United for Peace uh, chapter to do something to protect the civilians there in Syria. What's, ha what's happening there actually, it's, it's a shame on, on all of us that we cannot do anything and we find ourselves handcuffed that we cannot deliver anything for the Syrian people and cannot at least deliver for them the basic needs for the, for the means of life. Sheikh Mohammed, you say that you are committed to pursuing a peaceful way out of the crisis in Syria. However, we've seen peace offers rejected by the Syrian government. United Nations resolution that was blocked by Russia and China, le leaving many people to say, why don't you think about the next step? We always uh, raise this point, and it is a valid point. Uh, what are our options for the next step? And uh, when we act uh, as a state of Qatar, as a small country within a group of, of other like-minded countries who are supporting the Syrian people for uh, uh, their desire and their demands to get rid of this brutal regime. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to come up with a collective 
uh, effort together and collective decision that to go for uh, uh, another options. Uh, right now, we didn't see that the other uh, partners within this group are ready for any uh, plan Bs or, or any other options. What we are doing now, we are trying to uh, uh, explore all the efforts we can do in order to at least to stop the violence from ongoing now. Uh, uh, and at least ensuring uh, uh, the civilians' protection, at least ensuring humanitarian access for those people on need. Did you, did you get any sort of indication from the Russians or the Syrian government that they are willing this time to start a, a, a ceasefire in Aleppo for at least a few days? Well, Mr. Kerry explained for us that uh, he's, uh, he's going to discuss a, a nationwide ceasefire and. Uh, the ways of evacuating uh, some of the opposition uh, from Aleppo, if they will accept to do so. But uh, uh, the problem here we are facing every time that we don't have guarantees that after this evacuation, what's going to happen? Is there a nationwide ceasefire or we will uh, go back to the same dilemma that the ceasefire excluding terrorist organizations and the uh, definition of terrorist organizations for the regime is just uh, whoever is holding arm against them. So even the moderate opposition, they are under the same definition. Uh, uh, we are still skeptical about uh, how, how it's going to move forward, but we are trying to explore all the options. For us, th these are the only tools available right now. That's the problem. The Syrian government has made significant military gains in eastern Aleppo. If the city falls under the government, would you consider second option. By second option, I mean basically providing advanced weapons to the rebels. Well, uh, uh, if uh, Aleppo fall, uh, fall uh, into the government, uh, into the regime hands, do you think that this will be the end of the war? I don't think so. We believe that the Syrian people and the Syrian opposition are willing to resist and to continue uh, uh, their efforts. It will not end the war. The problem here, what we want to avoid, we want to avoid bringing the moderate opposition together with the extremism. And that's what the Syrian uh, regime now is doing. By pushing them and, and trying to evacuate them from uh, uh, all the other cities which, uh, which is under their control, they will, uh, they will find themselves lost. And then we are pushing them toward extremism. And this is what we have to avoid. We should avoid uh, having this. We don't want to end up with a situation where we have uh, the Syrian people will have two options either the regime or terrorist organizations. Mm -hmm. And these are the scenarios, unfortunately, we are seeing now if uh, the escalation is continuing. Let me read some of the comments that I get from activists operating in Syria, particularly in Aleppo. They say they blame you, friends of Syria, for, make, for making pledges, promises, but not fulfilling with genuine steps forward. And they say that, on the other hand, the Iranians and the Russians are providing the Syrian government with substantial financial and military weapons. And this is exactly why he managed recently to tip the balance in his own favor. Well, here, here is the problem. Uh, when we are talking about a support for, for uh, the Syrian, Syrian rebels, we could not upgrade this support in order uh, uh, to enable them to face uh, uh, the challenges uh, of the regime and challenge the regime uh, system. And, you know, they have, they are uh, 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 exceeding them by having the uh, air capacity where uh, the rebels they don't have and they don't have anything against it. And they have been asking for quite yeah. some time for anti-aircraft yeah. missiles, yeah. something which uh, the Americans uh, have rejected yeah. in the past. And, and here is the problem. There is no uh, uh, an agreement uh, among us that we can ensure that those uh, uh, weapons will not fall in the wrong hands. And this is our concerns. Uh, we would say that it, uh, uh, to a certain extent it, ha uh, it might be a legitimate concern, but we need to have another ways also to put a pressure on the regime to stop him from flying there. We have, uh, uh, we, we don't want to argue history right now, but we, we had different windows of opportunity to introduce uh, uh, and impose like no-fly zone, safe heavens, which we've been asking for a long time. Uh, if we would have that at that time, we will not have, we will not uh, have this refugees crisis in, in, in Europe 
and they are uh, uh, they are fleeing their homes. If we would have this, we would have uh, less civilian casualty. Uh, we have we have to have a collective effort in order to impose a holistic solution there. We cannot just uh, agree uh, collectively as like-minded country that we want to fight Daesh and Al Qaeda. Daesh and Al Qaeda are results, are results for all those crimes and atrocities committed by the regime. We cannot just address the result and we don't go back to the root causes and treat them. The problem that is still the common understanding that we have to address only the instant threat, which mm. is the terrorist group, but not going beyond that. For us, our concern here, that we are, if we are going to address the results only, and we will keep the current circumstances as it is, and, and this chaotic enabling environment for growing of extremism, that we will have more brutal group and more extremism growing there. So we have to think about a holistic solution. What the regime is committing right now is a terrorism. Is terrorism by all means. He killed more people than Daesh. We don't undermine Daesh or, or Al-Qaeda and undermining the military efforts against them. We have to combat them. We have to deal with them militarily. But we have to address in parallel also the root causes for them. What people need to understand, Sheikh Mohammed, is that basically Friends of Syria is a gathering of powerful countries. Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, France, Italy, the United States of America. You look at the map now of Syria, the government is obviously making significant gains, and the territory under the control of the rebels is shrinking. Do you still believe that President Bashar al-Assad would be ultimately defeated? If he will not be defeated, he will not be, for us, as I told you, he, he's not going, we are not going to solve this issue militarily. Mm -hmm. But if he's not going to be defeated, politically, uh, uh, around the negotiating table, he will not, uh, uh, he cannot have the similar Syria as before, as the past. And we will not have the similar Syria as the past. And we don't want to set an example that uh, uh, he will remain as he is, and we will deal with him as, as, as a de facto, and then uh, uh, we dealt with a criminal, and uh, we didn't hold him accountable for all the cr uh, crime he, he committed. Mm -hmm. we, cannot, we cannot set an example in the Middle East like this. Then it will be uh, uh, like a normal practice for any uh, uh, dictator or a brutal regime to just to, to remain and, and, and stand firm against any uh, peaceful uprising and against any demands for change. And he will be uh, then as uh, realized as a de facto, and, and all of us, we are going to deal with him. We should not accept this. We should not set similar example there in, in our region. We don't want to have another dictator and, and another uh, catastrophic situation like what's happening in Syria. So that's why we need to address Syria right now. We need to find a solution right now. Sheikh Mohammed Qatar is one of the key players in the region with significant support for the Syrian op opposition. If you remember, in 2012, when you started the whole Friends of Syria group, the idea was basically to build a moderate opposition that would take over Bashar al-Assad, sits aside, then you write a new, they write a new constitution, new elections, a new vibrant democracy will be established in Syria. If you look at the situation on the ground, what we have now is the moderate Free Syrian Army, for example, has been undermined by radical groups like the Jabhat Fath Hasham, which is formerly known as the Nusra Front, or ISIS, which takes huge areas in Syria and also in Iraq. Don't you think that this is something that didn't work in, for your own plans? Unfortunately, yes. It didn't work because we, ha we, ha we have tried uh, uh, throughout uh, the crisis, since it started, we have tried First, we have tried to address the entire issue peacefully. People, when they, uh, when they start protesting, they didn't ask for Bashar al-Assad to leave. They asked for some reforms. We have uh, uh, tried to talk to Bashar al-Assad at that time and try to convince him to do some reform. And he start from that time, he start accusing those people as terrorists and he start designating them as terrorists. Then we have placed uh, s uh, different initiatives in, in the League of Arab States and didn't, uh, uh, didn't work. We have uh, uh, started uh, the negotiation of Geneva 1, and we came up with uh, the Geneva 1 communique. And then uh, in Geneva 2, the Syrian regime, they have rejected the, uh, the political solution. 
In, uh, in the other talks in, in Vienna, uh, in the formation of the ISSG, we came up with uh, the resolution after the agreement 2254, which uh, adopted and reiterated on, on, on the outcomes of Geneva 1 communique, and nothing happened yet. So uh, it, is, it is not a, a failure of, uh, of Qatar or, or the like-minded countries. We see that it is a failure for the international community system. It seems that also your main allies seem to have now second thoughts about Syria. I'll give you an example. The United States of America initially said at the beginning Bashar al-Assad should go. Now they're not saying the same thing again. It seems that they are concerned that, or they believe that, Syria with Bashar al-Assad is much better, much safer, much more stable than Syria under ISIS or Jabhat al-Nusra. Well, uh, we don't want to see Syria under ISIS or, or, or Al-Qaeda. At the end of the day, we need uh, a, a country, a civil uh, state, uh, which is uh, governed by Syrians. It doesn't have any foreign influence on them. They are not getting uh, supports and, and uh, uh, from foreign militias or foreign fighters. All of us, we want to see a, a stable Syria. United States has stood with us and they are part of, of, of this coalition and we appreciate the role they are playing with us. Uh, now, after the complication of the situation, their priorities have been changed and we understand uh, that the priority for them is fighting extremism. But we have to be also uh, to look at it uh, from long-term perspective. What if we finish, uh, uh, if, we, if we defeated uh, those terrorist organizations, what will be next? How S Syria will look like? Are we happy to deal with uh, a regime like Bashar al-Assad? And for us, at least in Qatar, I tell you, we, we cannot deal with them. Now we have a huge influence over the Syrian opposition. Russia, on the other hand, have huge leverage in Syria. Have you been considering recently talking directly to the Russians to come up with a general agreement about how to move forward and come up with a comprehensive, peaceful way out of the crisis in Syria? We, we didn't spare any efforts talking to the Russians. Uh, we talked to, to them last year. We have proposed to them that let us uh, resume the talks. Let, we will help you in, in delivering the Syrian opposition around the table by convincing them, uh, us and, and the other uh, friends, uh, of Syria, and we will work together with you to address your concerns as Russia even. Uh, then also we cooperated with them in the ISSG in Lausanne format. If you, if you recall last October, we were part of it. We've been very constructive uh, participant there trying to find a solution. We have to, we, because we know that at, at the end of the day, we, we will solve this conflict around the table of negotiation. We cannot sol solve it in the, in the battlefield. No one can solve it in the battlefield, neither the regime and his allies, nor, uh, nor the opposition or us. So we have, we have to take a decision, decisive decision, that we have to put an end for this. We don't want to uh, bet on something that anyone will have more gains. Now we are losing Syria, we are losing entire Syria, and this is the problem. Is it possible to see the Syrian government and the Syrian opposition convened soon in Geneva or elsewhere to negotiate? We, we actually, negotiations. actually today we have uh, in the meeting we invited Riyadh Hijab and we had a discussion with him and we asked him about the willingness of the opposition to resume the talks under any circumstances and without a preconditions. He said if the regime is willing to negotiate as per the resolution, we are willing to go and uh, as per the UN Security, resolution, uh, National Security Council resolution 2254, we are willing to go there and negotiate. But the problem, they never seen uh, a seriousness demonstrated by the regime, from the other hand. Uh, they've been considered by, by the regime always as terrorists, even the moderate opposition, even the HNC, which is elected by the Syrian people. So. We are trying our best to put a tremendous pressure on the opposition, but also the regime allies need to put this similar pressure uh, on the regime to go to the table and to have a serious, a ser a serious discussion with the, with the opposition. Sheikh Mohammed, Syrians are concerned that if the Americans under Donald Trump, when he takes over, decide to stay out from Syria, stop arming the rebels, you might find yourself in a situation where you would just do the same thing and shift dramatically 
from your previous positions on Syria. Could that be a possibility? Well, uh, let me tell you something here. Uh, we, as, as a group of friends of Syria, we have been working in a collective efforts all the time. And uh, uh, this is what gives us also uh, uh, the empowerment to uh, help the Syrian opposition. We don't want to miss uh, uh, one of our allies like, and uh, a strong ally like United States, which have been with us since the start. Uh, uh, people uh, uh, become a uh, little bit skeptical how the next administration uh, going to look at Syria and what their policy is going to be. This is a very important question and uh, it came up to everyone's mind. We cannot predict what their policy is going to be, to be or to look like. But uh, we believe that the United States has been uh, our ally for a uh, long time now. They are, they have been, uh, we have been working together closely in different aspects, in different uh, uh, cases, in different situations. The United States is a, is a well-established country with institutions, and uh, they, are, they know how to evaluate the situation there, and their evaluation is based on, on principles, and that's, that's where they are basing their policies. We don't think that the principle will be changed by the administration when the, when the new, a new ad administration is, is coming to the United States. So that's why it's not uh, really a big concern for us that we are going to lose them, because we know that based uh, on their evaluation and their principles, they have uh, had their policy in, uh, in Syria to support the Syrian opposition and to support the Syrian people for their leg legitimate de demands, which is the same principle we came from uh, uh, to form our policy toward, uh, toward the legitimate demands of the Syrian people. So it's not uh, much of concern. We believe that the United States is our ally, and they will remain our allies. And uh, uh, the next administration, uh, we don't know what their policy is going to look like in Syria, but we don't believe that there is a big change or a big shift in, in the policy. The general sentiment among many people in the Middle East, and particularly in Syria, that if Bashar al-Assad takes over Aleppo, gains more ground, defeats the rebels, this is going to be a massive blow to the GCC countries because it will be seen as Iran and Russia are having the upper hand in the area. How do you respond to this feeling? I'll go back to the uh, 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 same note I have uh, told you at the beginning. Uh, uh, taking over Aleppo, it's not the end of the war for the opposition. It's not. It's our war to, uh, uh, to help the Syrian people, but it's mainly the war of the Syrian people themselves. We know that the Syrian people will not surrender for whatever tries of taking over Aleppo or taking over another city. Uh, the problem here, we want to avoid such a result because this, uh, uh, this result will lead to more extremism and more cha uh, uh, chaotic. We want to go back to the talks as soon as possible. We want to protect the civilians as soon as possible. We don't want to have the civilians there uh, hate everything around them because of, of this pressure they are having from, from the regime. And, and uh, the continuation of this humanitarian crisis there, it's really difficult making the situation much worse. What would we expect of such a situation? It's not, it's not about an influence of other countries or influence or, or it's again for, for the regime. It is. It, it will be uh, uh, something will have more dramatic effect, especially on the area of extremism. It will increase the flow of refugees to Europe, uh, to to other countries, to the to the neighboring countries. All of us we are suffering from what's happening there in Syria. All of us we are contributing to help the Syrian people to settle, to stay in their country, to help the Syrian people to get a better means of life. But uh, uh, the irresponsibility of, of the regime and, and the way he's, he's dealing with the situation is just making it worse. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman bin Jassim Al Thani Qatar's Minister of Foreign Affairs, thank you very, very much indeed for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank thank you, you very, very much, much indeed. Thank you.